so <laughs> you, want, you want to do this. Well, yeah. But uh, we decided to do Montrose Cemetery because it's, it's walkable, it's got good stuff, it's got a variety of ethnics in it that appeal to all kinds of people, and some extraordinarily interesting monuments in them. And uh, now, as to why Montrose Cemetery is here, <laughs> if you notice, you got St. James over there, or St. What? St. Luke's, Luke's, sorry, St. Luke's, Luke's over there, and Montrose here, Bohemian National across the street, and Bethel Cemetery, Jewish Cemetery yeah. out of the street. All these cemeteries were out of town. And they right. weren't allowed to have a cemetery in town. <laughs> and that's why all these oaks are right here that I talked about, the 200, 200 year old oaks. This was all out of town. And this cemetery is not like uh, cemeteries that have become like, corporate cemeteries, you know. This is still private family-owned cemetery. And they're very proud of their trees. private family that owns Montrose Cemetery, but they're very nice. When the COVID finally gets over, and if you walk when you walk past the, the office, they have the sign, you can't come in, right? So uh, when when that ends, they, they are the, one of the nicest sets of people to be helpful with grave locations. Now to respond to your question. Okay. It's just a piece of the cemetery. This, this I find really. That's, let's look at that on the right first. Look at what you can do now with, with gravestones. Well, this is. Yeah, look at, we'll have, come back to that one, Dave. We'll come back. But look at that. Look at how the, the. Remember the old ceramics? The round ceramics. Look what they can do now. Yeah. With these things, isn't that something? Etched. Laser etched, I think. No, it's it. Yeah, with some kind of etching. That's an old etching. But now, talk about the Assyrian. Says. Yeah. Oh, don't mess with it. What? What? It's stolen. Uh -oh. They stole it. Wow, now they got the oh, they have... No. Wow. The Oriole Institute is heavy on. Christmas program and instead of just like 1,600 people in there they crammed in 2,200 people into the balconies and they crammed them Mr. in. Mr. Bluebeard. Yes and he's doing his performance and an arc light arcs and catches a curtain on fire and everybody goes oh wow that's something 
and boy runs out and says, now everybody leave, there's a fire, and everybody, and then the story goes, somebody goes out the backstage door, and when they open the stage door, you get the puff of wind and oxygen, and the thing goes, boom, back, and everybody pours out of the front door exit, except, what's the story? The door is the open is in. The door is open in. That's why all public buildings now, the doors open. And it was a matinee, so there were yes. lots of families. In yes. Yeah. But there, there's only two people buried in a whole cemetery. In this whole cemetery, only two people who are buried from the Iroquois Theater fire. This is the only cemetery that wanted the notoriety, notice the 1908 date, that wanted the notoriety of a memorial for the Chicago uh, Iroquois Theater fire. So, they're, But they're not buried here. I, I'm not sure where they are, but there's one there and there's one yeah. over there. I looked at a house. <laughs> this is one of the three areas Look at here in Montrose here. Cemetery where you have Japanese burials. Like I said, you have across the street, you have Bohemian National for all the Bohemians. You have the Syrians over there. People like to be buried with their people. And this cemetery, being non-denominational, said, why sure we'll take Japanese Americans. In the late 20s, in the 1930s, they, the Japanese decided they wanted to be buried together. And after the war, they continued to be buried. There's another section down there, the Japanese another section up over there that's Japanese that we'll see in a little bit. So it's really something. This is the, in a sense, one of the major spots for Japanese Americans to be there.